is k Nashville. Bienvenidos and welcome to Kefasa Nashville. My name is Cristina Allen and thank you for joining us. This week my guests are from the Tennessee Foreign Language Institute. I have with me Mr. Aaron Lovett who's the Director of Curriculum and Training mm -hmm. and Ms. Leah Hashinger who is the ESL, which is English Second Language, mm -hmm. to Grow Program Manager. Yeah. Thank you both for joining us. Thanks Happy for to having be here. us. Um, I've known about your program, I know I believe it started in 1986, and your um, executive director has been on the show before, but tell us exactly what the Tennessee Foreign Language Institute is and its purpose. Okay, well, our mission is to meet the linguistic and cultural needs of businesses and um, citizens of the state of Tennessee. And so in doing that, we have interpreter and translation services, we teach foreign languages, we teach English as a second language, we do professional development for teachers and for interpreters, and we train English a as a second language teachers, we train other language teachers as well. So let's, let's dig into that a little bit, because that's okay. a lot, and mm -hmm. I think it started off because of the need of um, our court systems and so forth and needing that, but you said it's a linguistic and meet the linguistic and cultural needs. Yes. Tell me about each of those separately. Okay, well, um, just in a nutshell, in the state of Tennessee, there are well over a hundred language spoken, languages spoken, and uh, many of the people that speak those languages don't speak English well, and so they need people to uh, offer translation services um, for documents, they need people to help them navigate the court system or the, the, the a medical situation with an interpreter. So you have not just, the, and there's a difference between translation and interpretation, I'll let you give us that, because people don't realize mm -hmm. that. So give us okay. that definition. Can you give me that? Sure, absolutely. So an interpreter is someone who will actually um, orally say what is happening. So if you're at a medical appointment, for example, and you are a Spanish speaker, you're going to need an interpreter to be present okay. to, to speak what the doctor is saying to you. Um, and a translation is a written version of that. So it could be more technical too. Exactly, yeah. So a lot of translations that we do at the Tennessee Foreign Language Institute would be someone who's coming from a different country and they want to get their high school or college transcripts okay. translated into English. Okay. Our translation department would be able to do that. Now I know Vanderbilt and um has been uh, taking the lead in with their, especially the children's hospital, and having interpreters on site. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a great story where, you know, there's been instances in the medical field where someone just gave birth of a different language and they did not have anyone to speak that language to console the mother or talk to the mother, and that was boom, we got to really change our demographic shift, therefore, we got to ref be reflective of our community. Mm -hmm. So, interpreters, translators, courts, most people, and I guess I would think Spanish is the most um, sought after language. Is that true? And if so, if not, which one follows that? Well, I'm not in the interpreter okay. uh, uh, translation services department. That's not really exactly what I do. But um, you might be surprised. We have so many people who speak Arabic. Who speak other? Um, who speak Southeastern uh, language? Asian. Uh, Southeast Asian, Asian languages. Language. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> and um, and so there's there's Chinese. There's uh, there's Somali. There. Mm -hmm. There's yeah, just beautiful there's Burmese, Burmese, Korean, Nepal. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And, and these and people are here mostly through the refugee program. Or are you looking more like the um, uh, the spouses of uh, Vanderbilt's profession, no, both no, or no? A lot of refugees, refugees, refugees and immigrants. Refugees. Yeah. And so, okay, so as we are, as you are being in more demand for your services, mm -hmm. where do you see the demand coming from? Well, we get a lot of demand from the business sector. Okay, um, so private entities. Mm -hmm. Private entities. We also are a fantastic resource for state government. There are many state agencies that uh, could use our services instead of relying on a non-state agency to do to offer translation or interpretation or to train teachers or whatever. Um, we're a state agency, and so communication and and quality of work is is very high on our mind, and so we we work very well with other state agencies. So when you see this, um, a lot of the. Uh, religious sectors coming out and teaching English as a second language in their facilities. 
are they necessarily certified or do they come try to be certified is that what you do or you yes don't know? <laughs> yes yes no um, the we love to see an organization decide to train their teachers mm -hmm. because what happens is the or train their volunteers yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, a person may be able to speak a language but without good training it's difficult to teach that language well okay. and so what we offer is an internationally recognized certification but it's actually changed the face of English language teaching in Nashville because now in many of the community organizations there are trained and certified teachers that are able to help their students they, they may be volunteering or they may be paid they may be at a church or at a community center but they're helping their students get the English language skills that are necessary for life in the United States and and what is the emotion of these and I say emotion I mean realistically once you know the language you can mm -hmm. succeed and, and and we're talking to refugees obviously in business it's a business opportunity especially with exporting and international trade becoming a huge opportunity within Tennesseans I mean what are some of the the I think the compassion I mean when people come out after a class of learning English I mean what is their first response <laughs> you know I mean do they just always want to speak it do they want to continue it or get better or what it, it depends on the students okay. I, I've, I mean, yeah. I've seen mm -hmm. everything from 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 mild acceptance mm -hmm. of okay I I'm gonna live here and succeed to enthusiasm to tears of joy I, I know that Leah has seen lots of excellent uh, uh, students who had no hope of learning English but because of the, her ESL to go program now they're able to actually have have this hope of communicating well let's do this let's take a quick break and we're going to come back to talk to Leah um, who is the ESL to go program manager and you're going to be surprised of how this concept came together as well as its success so we'll be back right back with Get Bus in Nashville good leading <laughs> 